Well, it is our distinct pleasure to uh, welcome you in on video chat as we go to Wodonga, Australia. CFL punter Josh Bartell. There he is joining us on video chat. Uh, good day, mate. How are you? How you doing, Rod? And uh, welcome to the Dong. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is that what they call Wodonga, the Dong? I like it. The Dong. That is correct, yeah. So uh, I appreciate you spending the time, my friend. And uh, I got to say, you are the furthest away that we've joined anybody, frankly, during the pandemic. We haven't talked to anybody as far away as Australia. So how is life for you down there and uh, all your mates? <laughs> yeah, actually, life's going pretty good. Um, we've uh, had a new addition to the family, got a new little baby boy. So um, just adjusting to that's a little bit, little bit different, having to look after someone else and keep them alive for as well forever i suppose you got to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> but um now nah, all my mates are good it's this isolation thing's a little bit different don't really get to catch up with them much but making the most of it well that's good well so obviously you know cfl training camps are postponed uh, what is your status for 2020 football wise and, and obviously everybody knows your story you came to the cfl eight seasons ago now uh, with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in 2012, a few seasons there, and then with the Rough Riders, I think for five, and then the last season with the BC Lions. What's on tap for 2020? Yeah, well, I was decided to take this year off, and um, BC reached out and offered a contract, but decided to take a year off and spend it with family. But um, with the season postponed, I think there's talk of it coming back in September, I think they were saying. Yeah, I might be a shot to, to come back. Might not even take a year off. <laughs> well, good for you that you uh, have the luxury of doing that. I mean, you know, looking back at your career, Josh, and I don't think I ever asked you this. You must have done these interviews in the past. How did a guy from Wodonga, Australia, get to the Canadian Football League and have such a long career in it once you got here? <clears throat> yeah, I guess I was pretty lucky when I got the job at Hamilton. It was when um, Medlock headed down south to the NFL and there was a spot there available and I remember my first training camp there I was didn't have a clue what was going on what I had to do but um, I was pretty lucky I had really good guidance in Paul as Bolston he helped me along and he said it's pretty easy what you got to do so like, you just got to kick it right or kick it left and try to kick it in front of you so that's pretty good advice and I've used it for I don't know seven eight years Pretty good uh, mentor there in Paul Osbaldist and obviously a, uh, a Hall of Famer. You know, the one thing that I think of you, Josh, and I'll get into the specifics of your career stats and things, but the friendships that you made with guys, so much so that you've had guys come to Australia to spend time with you and visit you there. Um, who are the closest friends that you made in your time in the CFL? Yeah, I was always pretty lucky, like obviously – um, I like to think I'm a pretty likable guy. I'm a good person to hang around, so making friends was pretty easy. But obviously, you always have that special bond with the specialist, the kicker, the snapper. Um, you know, good times. My first ones are in Hamilton with Kev Scott and Luca Conji. And my second year there was actually when Brett Lowther got drafted there to Hamilton and um, started our friendship rather early. Then in Sask, obviously, had Hoos and Kripinha. And, um, yeah, a couple of the boys have managed to travel down to Australia, like who's come down for my wedding a couple of years ago and ran an absolute muck, and I don't know if he's allowed back in Australia, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> also had Sammy Hurl come down, took him to a cricket match down in Melbourne. I'm not sure if you guys know what a cricket match is. Um, he didn't really know what one was either. But And then this off-season was Greg Ellingson come down and stayed for a bit as well and travelled around Australia, so... Yeah, you know, the boys are starting to come over. There's at the start there's a lot of people saying they're always gonna to come to Australia and visit and come on a holiday, but those three people are the only ones that have followed through so far. <laughs> I could just see their picture on walls, uh wanted. Jorgen Hughes uh, all over uh Australia, no doubt. Yeah, but you you are not immune to the harsh realities of pro football. And to be honest with you, when John Ryan became available, I felt terrible for you because I knew he was going to sign here if there was a chance. And I never talked to you about it when it happened, but I was crushed for you because you'd made such a great home here. Can you take me through that scenario? And you landed on your feet, obviously, in BC. That's not a shock. That couldn't have been easy. 
No, it was. <clears throat> you know, I remember when he when he first said he wanted to come to the CFL. There's always talk of him coming back to his hometown of Regina, and um, Dicky sort of told me that yeah, you know, we I was looking okay and all that, but obviously things change, and you know, management wanted to go with John Ryan, which yeah, he's which is pretty cool. He's a bit of a legend. He's got a Super Bowl ring, um, homebred guy. So you know, it's pretty good story but the story wasn't that great when I actually Dicky made that phone call and told me I wasn't coming back it was the weekend before I was meant to fly out to camp and had a bit of a going away party with all my friends and family and that and you know tipped a few beers in and then I think it was a Sunday morning I was feeling a little bit rough and that was when uh Dicky made that phone call of giving me the bad news so I got uh the bad news on top of a bit of a hangover so it was a double whammy and it wasn't the greatest day for me uh i can't imagine that it was and uh but again uh, you landed on your feet with the bc lions so i mentioned those markets you played in hamilton saskatchewan and bc i can't imagine being a cfl player is the same in all of those what are the what are the similarities what are the differences of all those markets playing for those teams yeah, obviously in in Sask it was it's great. Like the the fans, the supporters, they really get around the team, and yeah, they they treat you so well. It's got so many great friends in Regina outside of the football. Um, they just you know, they take you in with open arms, and it's you know makes you feel really good about yourself. And then obviously you go to Vancouver; it's a lot bigger market. You know, they got their ice hockey and. It's you know it's a tougher one to break into, but they got their diehard fans there, and yeah, it was a little bit harder to fit in, like a big city, new team. But yeah, you make the most of it. Absolutely. Well, the the one big thing I saw was when you posted photos of yourself and your wife once you were with the Lions. I'm like, is that in Australia or is that on the beach in Vancouver? I mean. Absolutely breathtaking views in Vancouver that I'm sorry, you're not getting in Hamilton and Saskatchewan. Let's be honest. No, nah, you're up there. It's um you you're pretty sport when you're in Vancouver. You just you know, hour and a half you're up in Whistler and taking some of the great photos and then you know, it's it's only a couple of hour drive to get like a great picture to put on Instagram. But, um <laughs> in in Sask obviously it's you know, you got. You know, I suppose you got. Uh, was it Lake Wiscana there in in Regina? It's it's pretty well known, I suppose. But yeah, great Instagram photos at Wascana Lake. There's no there's no doubt about that. Hey, I I have to ask you this, by the way. Your special teams coaches between Hamilton, Saskatchewan, and BC. Just a just an outright football question here. What was the difference in the things you were being asked to do in terms of placement of the ball, hang time? Things like that. Was there was there a huge difference from team to team to team? Or, or coach to coach to coach? Um, it's not a huge difference. Obviously, location is is the biggest key, and you always don't want to uh, kick your coverage. Um, I remember at Sask, we had like a, a bit of a different theory. It was more kick it straight down the hash with a lot more hang time, you know, to give our gunners and jokers time to get down there and make the tackles and that was a little bit different. Whereas other teams, it was a lot more location. Try to kick it close to the sideline, and yeah, you know, use the use the boundary as an extra cover guy. So there's a little bit of different theories there, but yeah, you just obviously do do your best what you're told to do, and hopefully they like it and keep you around. Here's one for you. Put your thinking cap on, Josh. I've I've, your name's come up a lot in the CFL 2.0 movement, global players, bringing them in from around the world. You're one of the few from Australia. Um, what did having you in the CFL mean to any football fans of American-Canadian rules in Australia? Did it extend behind, beyond your friends and family? You know what I'm saying? They're trying to grow the game around the world. You're one of those guys. Did it, did it cause a ripple in uh, the dong? <laughs> Oh, not really. It's I tell people that I'm up in Canada being a punter and they're like they actually didn't even know there was a league up there and but slowly like you know, it's they they started following me. There's actually games at the start of the season that have been on ESPN two over here and a lot of the family and friends started getting to watch them and 
even like the the Pro Kick Australia people down in Melbourne realise that you know the CFL it's no joke up there. It's actually a really great standard of football, and they they're starting to look to put people up there in colleges in Canada. And yeah, you know, there's a few Aussies that are actually going to have a chance to get in that global draft. So you know, it could be interesting. You know, there's a lot of young Aussies coming through with a decent leg on them. So they're all kickers. There's no other position players that might go in the global draft. Is that what you're saying? I'm pretty sure they'd be all kickers and punters. <clears throat> I don't know. There's probably a couple of D linemen floating around, but yeah, I'd say 95% of you is just the kickers and punters. So do you feel the CFL 2.0, for, for the purpose that it is, to grow the game around the world, is a worthwhile movement as a guy that, now, you didn't come to the global draft, but you would have if it was around in 2012. Yeah, I reckon it's it's a great thing. Like, um, obviously, I was pretty lucky to get my non-import status early. But if this 2.0 had started a little bit early, there'd be a lot of Aussies, you know, trying to have get a jobs in the CFL. And I don't know, maybe a couple of Aussies would have taken my job a little bit earlier. But I don't know, for some reason, I snuck a six, seven seasons out. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, that you think it is a worthwhile effort because, like I said, your name comes up a lot amongst my football friends and I in our discussions about guys from around the globe that have played in this league. And uh, the question was always, did it really turn Australians on to the CFL that Josh was here? And you're saying that uh, for a lot of people it did, So, which is exactly what it's, what it's meant for. So you mentioned the potential of taking the year off. It looks like it'll be forced on you. It might not even be your decision. Coronavirus is making that decision for everybody. What do you see in 2021? I mean, uh, are you missing it? Normally, you'd be in camp right now. I mean, how do you feel about your CFL future? Yeah, it's uh, camp's a little bit different. It's um, you sort of away from your family and friends for a month. Um, I know I don't see the the wifey for a good month, but that's that's a lot of other people. But um, yeah, 2021 is going to be interesting. It's we we're always sort of planning to to come back over there and. Play another couple of seasons, you know. Play as long as I can, really, until, until no one wants me or the body breaks down. So, just don't really want to get a real job. <laughs> uh, I'll keep milking this CFL thing for as long as I can. Well, obviously, you're feeling good. What's the hardest hit that you've ever taken? I know you never laid any. What's the hardest you've taken? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to have taken. On on the field or <laughs> yeah uh, on the field yes <laughs> okay I'm gonna say it was probably when I was at Hamilton second year we were playing Toronto at Toronto it was uh, started doing the rollout Aussie punt run run to your right and give her a good launch if and then um, Toronto guy just comes must have seen he's like oh punter gonna light him up. Got a, got a fair bit of me. Um, I remember didn't really know it was hard. I just started running down the field and, you know, the helmet was a little bit sideways and I was actually surprised I was running in the right direction. <laughs> well, um, uh, you live to tell the story, so that's good, Josh. You know, those are literally all the questions that I've had for you, but that's quite a few. I mean, I think about you a lot and uh, the great times that you spent here. Is there anything that you'd like to say to CFL fans and Ryder fans in general before we let you go? No, I just you know, keep supporting the team. Like um they're they're a very lucky team in there in SAS to have that great support around them. It's you know, I remember I come all the way from Australia and it's you know, it's, I feel like it's my second home there in Regina and I miss a lot of people. I remember on day what was it, walk three days, used to go to Bobby Joe's cafe and she always uh, dish the boys up a great lunch and she was, I feel like she was our second mother over there looking after all us boys and but, um, yeah, hang in there. It's, I know they love their football, but it's going to be back. Awesome. Great words. Bobby Joe's Cafe, by the way, the shout out. No charge. Josh, thanks for this. Stay safe, my friend. Can't wait to see you again. I've, I know you'll be back uh, for various reasons and so forth. Uh, and, and when I mean, I mean you'll be back for football, you'll be back probably for your boys' weddings and stuff like that. So uh, I look forward to that day. But stay safe. Enjoy being a dad. And uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks, Rod. Thanks for having me, mate. It's a pleasure. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand.
For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.